Welcome to TurboCAD. In this video, we will be going over the basics. TurboCAD may seem overwhelming at first, so if you are new to CAD or just new to TurboCAD, this will be a good place to start. Okay, where to begin? If you follow my mouse, you will notice I am hovering over the menu bar. Just about every tool and function can be accessed through the menu bar. Below the menu bar is the standard toolbar. Many of the same tools and functions found in the menus are also available in the toolbars for quicker access. The standard toolbar contains a variety of high-level functions. For example, we can toggle the grid on and off. Let's try it. Hover your mouse over the grid icon. Then click once to turn the grid on. The grid will appear below the toolbars. This is the drawing area. Move your mouse around the drawing area. Notice that in the bottom right corner, the position of your mouse is tracked. Now back up to the toolbars. Notice the little triangle placed on the bottom right of the grid icon? That means there is a flyout toolbar available. You can open a flyout toolbar by clicking and holding for a second. Let's try it. Hover over the grid icon, then click and hold until the flyout toolbar appears, then release the mouse button. You can now see several icons which activate different grid functions and at the top of the flyout you will see the gripper highlighted by my mouse. This gripper indicates that the toolbar can be pulled off and placed wherever you like in the workspace. Let's try it. Hover over the gripper, then click and drag the toolbar and place it to the right of the standard toolbar. It should snap right into place. Now where were we? Oh yes, toolbars. Below the standard toolbar is the property toolbar. The property toolbar is a series of dropdowns which display the properties of the currently selected tool or entity. If you look over to the left side toolbar which contains the drawing tools, you will notice that the line tool is selected. So the settings currently displayed in the property toolbar are that of the line tool. Let's change the color to red, the line pattern to dashed, and the line weight to 0.02. Then draw a line snapping to two of the grid points. Oh wait, I have not told you about snaps yet. Snaps aid your drawing by snapping your mouse click to another entity. So the grid snap will snap your mouse clicks to the grid. Snaps can be found in the standard toolbar just to the right of the grid. Let's fly out the snaps toolbar, then choose grid snap. Now we can draw our line. Hover over one of the grid points and you will notice a magenta diamond. This means a snap is engaged and the little icon to the bottom right of the diamond will show you which snap is activated. Click your mouse while the grid snap is highlighted to place your first point. Then hover over another grid intersection and click to place your second point. Go ahead and try it a couple more times so you can get the hang of it. While drawing your lines, you can use the center mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the drawing. This makes the entities on the screen appear larger or smaller. Clicking the center mouse wheel zooms to the extents of the drawing. You may notice some of the other snaps and drawing aids, more specifically the midpoint snap. Because of its hierarchy, the midpoint snap will override the grid snap. In this case, if you need to use a grid snap, right click and choose grid snap from the local menu. This local snap will turn off all other snaps for a single mouse click. So now that we are done playing around, we have a mess to clean up. At the top of the left side toolbar lies the select tool. When entities such as the lines we have drawn are selected, they can be deleted by hitting the delete key on your keyboard. Let's try it. Choose the Select tool from the left side toolbar, click on one of the lines you have drawn, then hit the Delete key on your keyboard. We can select multiple entities by clicking and dragging around the entities we would like to select. Notice how the entities near the extents of the drawing area were not selected? That is because when I dragged from left to right, the fence did not completely enclose the entities I wanted to select. Now if I drag from right to left, any entities that the fence touches will then be selected. Notice how we have shaded the fenced in area blue or green so you can see the difference? Let's go ahead and select all the lines in the drawing area and delete them. For this next part, we will want to turn off the grid and disable the grid snap. Next, we are going to draw a rectangle, but first we will want to change its properties as they now match the line tool. This time, we will change the properties in the properties dialog box. Choose the rectangle tool from the line flyout. Then right click the rectangle tool. The properties dialog will then appear. Notice that there are several different categories of properties. In this case, we will be changing pen properties. After clicking pen, choose continuous as the line pattern, zero for the line weight, and by layer for the color. This will default to black for the time being. Once you have changed the properties, click OK. Now it's time to draw a rectangle. 
First, click somewhere in the drawing area. Next, hit the Tab key on the keyboard. Notice that the size A field is highlighted in the bottom left corner of the screen. This part of the user interface is called the Inspector Bar. This is where you can input specific values for most operations. Go ahead and input 6 for size A, hit the Tab key, input 4 for size B, then hit the Enter key on your keyboard. Now click the center mouse wheel, then zoom out a bit to center the rectangle on screen. Next, we are going to draw a circle. First, select the circle tool from the left side toolbar. The default circle tool starts at the center point and ends on the circumference of the circle defining its radius. Let's start by snapping to the midpoint of the right side of the rectangle, then snap to one of the corners to finish the circle operation. Now let's draw a second circle. Start by snapping to the midpoint of the right side of the rectangle like before, but this time let's tab into the inspector bar, enter 1.5 into the radius field, then hit enter. Next, we are going to remove some of the rectangle and larger circle to create a single entity surrounding the smaller circle. On the right side toolbar, open the second flyout from the top, then choose Object Trim. The Trim tool works by selecting entities to define a cutting edge, then choosing a section of an intersecting entity separated by this edge to be removed. With the Trim tool active, select the rectangle as the cutting edge, then click to the left side of the circle. Notice how the left side of the circle was removed? Next, we will want to remove the right side of the rectangle. We could do this with the Trim tool, but we will explode the rectangle instead. Now hit the Escape key to exit out of the Trim operation, then hit the spacebar to switch to the Select tool. Now select the rectangle. The Explode tool is found on the bottom of the right side toolbar. Exploding an entity will create a more primitive entity or set of entities. In this case, exploding a rectangle will create four lines. Let's try it. With the rectangle selected, hit the Explode icon, then hit the Escape key to deselect. Notice that the rectangle is now four lines. We can now select the line on the right side and delete it. Next, we are going to join the three remaining lines with the half circle to create a polyline. To do this, we will need to use the Join Polyline tool. The Join Polyline tool can be found in the fourth flyout from the top of the right side toolbar. After choosing the Join Polyline tool, right-click somewhere in the drawing area to bring up the local menu. From the local menu, choose Auto Join. Next, choose one of the lines. It may seem like nothing happened, but if we hit the space bar, then select one of the lines, all three lines and the arc will be selected. We can verify the entity type in the selection info palette. Let's try it. Click tools on the menu bar, then hover over palettes. Notice how a submenu appears? Submenus are marked with a right facing arrow. Now choose selection info from the palette submenu. By default, the selection info palette will appear on the right side of the TurboCAD window. Palettes can be pulled off and docked elsewhere, but for now, let's keep it on the right side. Notice how the entity type is displayed in the top of the selection info palette? If I explode the polyline, I can then see what it was made out of. Let me quickly rejoin the polyline so we can move on. I think now would be a good time to save our drawing. Go ahead and click the save icon in the standard toolbar. The first time you save a drawing, the save as dialog will come up and you will be prompted to name the drawing. Let's save this drawing as quick start. Next, we are going to talk about creating 3D objects. But first, let's create some layers. Open the Layers palette by clicking the Layer icon on the left side of the Property toolbar. Then grab the Layers palette and dock it on the center of the Selection Info palette. Notice how there are multiple tabs on the bottom of the palette? You can use these to switch between palettes. Let's create two new layers. In the Layers palette, choose Create New Layer near the top of the palette. A dialog will pop up, prompting you to name the layer. Let's name this layer 2D. Now let's do it again, and this time we will name the layer 3D. Next, we will place all of our entities on the 2D layer. Choose Select All from the Edit menu, then hit the checkbox to the right of 2D in the Layers palette. We can also change the color of different layers, but first deselect the selected entities by hitting the Escape key. Now let's open the color palette to the right of 2D in the Layers palette and select Coral. Notice how the polyline changed color, but the circle did not? That is because the polyline's color property was set to by layer, while the circle was set to black. Go ahead and select the circle and change its color to by layer. There, now both the circle and the polyline are coral. Next, we are going to add thickness to our 2D entities by using the extrude tool. But first, let's switch to a different camera view. To do this, right click somewhere in the drawing area, 
then select Isometric Southeast from the second pop-up. Now it's time to extrude our entities. Let's choose the Simple Extrude tool from the left side toolbar, and before we select any entities to extrude, change the layer in the Properties toolbar from 0 to 3D. Now select the circle. Notice how a preview of the extruded entity appears on screen and the height is changed in the inspector bar? We can finish the operation with another mouse click, so let's try and give the extrude a height of at least 2. Now that we have entities on multiple layers, try playing around with layer visibility a bit. You can do this by clicking the eye icon in the layers palette. Before we move on, be sure that all of the layers are visible. Now it's time to extrude the polyline. With the Simple Extrude tool engaged, select the polyline, tab into the inspector bar, and enter a height of 1. Some of the extruded object may be off the viewable area. Go ahead and click the center mouse wheel to zoom to extents if this is the case. To see what's going on a little better, let's switch to a rendered view. To do this, click the teacup icon on the right side of the property toolbar. Go ahead and grab this toolbar and pull it off to the right, docking it just beside the property toolbar. Next, click Draft Rendering near the center of this toolbar. A warning message will pop up informing you that no lights are in this drawing. Go ahead and click Yes to add the default lights. Because of the light sources, the black objects are rendered a dark gray. Feel free to brighten things up a bit by changing the colors of the 3D objects. I will change the outside object to yellow and the inside object to red. Now we are going to create a hole in the outside object using 3D Subtract. 3D Subtract is found in a flyout near the center of the right side toolbar. After choosing 3D Subtract, look near the bottom left of the TurboCAD window. There you will see the tool prompt. If you ever get stuck, look to the tool prompt. The tool prompt is telling us to select the first object or minuend. This is the object that we are subtracting from. Let's select the outside object for the minuend. Next, select the inside object as the operand. This is the object we are subtracting. If you are using TurboCAD Professional, you may get a warning message about the editing history. Go ahead and hit No to continue. There should now be a hole in the 3D object. Let's go ahead and save the drawing again. It's good to save your drawing frequently and occasionally save it under a different name, particularly when you hit a milestone. Choose Save As from the File menu. Let's save this file as Quick Start 1. This concludes the TurboCAD Quick Start tutorial.